on Undetected Footprints, we are talking about R Rachel, Trilica, Renee Wilson, and Julie Ann Mosley. They have been missing for 49 years, 9 months, and 13 days. Julie was accompanied by her family's friend, Lisa Renee Wilson, and Lisa's friend, Mary Rachel Trillica for a day of Christmas shopping at a at the Seminary South Shopping Center, known as the Fort Worth Town Center. On December 23rd of 1974, Julie and Rachel had never met before the shopping trip. Julie lived across the street from Lisa's grandmother's house where Lisa was spending the late morning hours of December 23rd. Lisa was dating Julia's older brother Terry at the time. The girls asked Terry to accompany them shopping, but he decided to visit a friend instead and they allowed Julie to tag along after she received permission from her mother. The three girls departed before 12 p.m and arrived at the Army-Navy store to retrieve Christmas presents that were there on Lelway. Then they headed to the Seminary South Shopping Center, parking Rachel's Oldsmobile on the upper park level near Sears. Witnesses informed authorities that they had seen the three girls inside the mall during the day. Authorities believe that they returned to the car at some point during the afternoon, but what happened to them afterwards remains a mystery. The girls, 17-year-old Rachel Trelisa, the former Mary Rachel Arnold, 14-year-old Renee Wilson, and 9-year-old Julie Ann Mosley vanished December 23rd after telling their families they were going shopping. Their abandoned car was found that afternoon in a parking area of Seminary South Shopping Center. The next day, the only major lead in the case developed when a handwritten note was received stating the three had gone to Houston. Police weren't sure if the note had been written freely. It has since been sent to the FBI lab in Washington for analysis. Tuesday, a Justin man found some undergarments near a stream west of Justin near Texas Highway 157. They were not there Christmas Day. But Renee Wilson's parents examined the clothing and determined it did not belong to the missing girls. Some of our friends called us this morning and asked me if we'd heard about it on the news, and I told them no. So then we called down here, and they told us we could come look at them. What happened when you looked at the clothing? They're not Renee's. They're not Julie's, I know. I didn't know that. Renee doesn't have anything like that, and they're bigger. And Renee didn't have anything that color of green, like the panties were. These girls have been missing now for nine days. What are your feelings at this point? There's something that's happened to them. I know it. Cause it's just not like them. They wouldn't have just run off. Nobody heard nothing from them. Well, nine days ago, I thought maybe they had just went somewhere, but now I don't believe they have. I believe they've been picked up by somebody and being held. And that they've been hurt or something. You haven't given up hope, though? No, uh huh? No hope give up. Just want them to come on back home. Meanwhile, police continue checking every possible lead. A reward fund has been established with the Forest Hills State Bank in an effort to prompt even more information. And the Wilsons say they will turn to a Dallas psychic for help. The Oldsmobile was discovered locked in the lot with the presence still inside. When the vehicle was located at approximately 6 p.m. that evening, there were no sign of the three girls. One witness claimed she observed the three girls being hustled into a pickup truck by unidentified men the day they vanished. Another witness came forward in 1981, seven years following their disappearance, and stated he saw an unidentified male forcing a girl into a van in the mall's lot. When the witness approached them, the man told him it was a family dispute and ask him to stay out of it. Neither of these stories have been verified by authorities. Police initially assumed that the girls had run away of their own volition. Their families, however, insisted otherwise. A letter arrived at Rachel's residence on the morning of December 24, 
1974. The day after the girls, the day after the girls were last seen, it was addressed to Thomas, Rachel's husband, and the name Rachel was written in the upper left corner of the envelope. The letter stated that the girls had gone to Houston, Texas, and would return in about a week. It also gave directions to Rachel's car in the mall parking area. Authorities are still unsure of the letter writer's identity. Handwriting tests have proved inconclusive. Over the years, the family of the three missing girls have struggled to deal with claims that the girls' bodies were in different places throughout Texas. None of these claims have panned out. The families hired John Swam, a private investigator, in 1975 after frustrations with the police investigation. John took himself out in 1979, and his records were destroyed. But it is unclear if he uncovered any legitimate information concerning the case. Rachel's brother, Rusty Arnold, located a private investigator, Dan James, in 1999. A man who maintains he has never received any financial compensation for his work on the case. James and Rusty believe witness reports that Rachel and Wilson were seen alive in the initial days following their 1974 disappearance at stores and at gas stations. They now believe that both Lisa and Julie are deceased but that Rachel is alive and being kept from visiting the Fort Worth area by persons unnamed. James does claim that several credible witnesses reported seeing Rachel in the Fort Worth area during the Christmas holidays as recently as 1998. James and Rusty also believe that the unidentified persons are maintaining efforts to keep Rachel fostered away. They refuse to detail their evidence of any supporting these claims. It is worth noting that James began offering a $25,000 reward to any person whose information about the case leads to the arrest and conviction of the responsible party or parties, December of 1999. James is also one of the sponsors of the website MissingTrio.com, a site that offers information and news updates on the missing girl's case. In April of 2001, NBC5 in Texas reported that a witness came forward and told Fort Worth police investigators that he saw the three girls inside a pickup truck with a young male security guard from Seminary South Shopping Center at approximately 11.30 p.m. on the evening of their disappearance. The witness stated that the girls seemed relaxed and were in the vehicle willingly. He said he contacted the authorities a few days following the girls' disappearance, but that the investigators failed to follow through with his lead until April of 2001. Authorities told reporters that they located the security guard who was identified by the witness, but that the man denied the girls were in his truck on the evening of December 23, 1974. Detectives went on to state that they are actively looking at five suspects and also utilizing DNA testing in their investigation. Police have said that they now believe the girls left the mall with an individual that they trusted and were harmed afterwards. Their cases remain unsolved.